Hey there, everyone. Michael Damon here for another episode of Starbeam One Stand Up in Shine and Chill. A monthly check in where we do a little stand up, let you know what I've been working on, what I will be working on, and any sort of friction points that I've encountered. Let's begin. <laughs> Okay, yes. So, uh, you know, I took a week off and I actually feel a lot better uh, for that. You know, when I started this, I wanted it to be a, a daily thing, actually. When I, and I still do. I still intend on having a daily sort of just, you know, five, ten minutes. If I can, just, you know, it's going to take a production crew, I can tell you that much. Uh, but just, you know, really quick, snappy. Um, and uh, But it was mostly to have for marketing and getting people to release their products live. And eventually I want to get to that point. But for now, it's just like I'm the only person working on this project. And, uh, you know, if I'm sitting here making videos all the time, I am not coding. And that's what really the, where the value is at right now. So that's what I need to be focused on. When I do these, uh, and kind of the struggle is I actually do enjoy doing these. Uh, but when I do it, it's like a day to film. And then there's also the day after and kind of watching the statistics, even though they're not much, you know, it's still like getting likes and subscribers and whatnot. And thanks again to everyone out there for subscribing and the likes. Uh, but you know, it's just, uh, it does take time. And if I'm doing that every week, that's sort of like, you know, a full day. Uh, and then, you know, maybe like a day and a half, maybe two days sort of thing. And it's just, that's just too much. So I think doing a month, at least once a month is, uh, more my style or maybe I'll do, um, you know, once uh, every or like a semi-weekly. We'll see. I'm just kind of trying to feel it out. But uh, definitely for this next month, I'm just going to take April off and just focus on coding because uh, it's just been a disaster. Uh, I mentioned this in my blog post, too. It's just everything is on fire right now. Nothing's really working. And, uh, you know, just when you think it's going to get even you can't get any worse, it does. And so uh, sort of more of the same here. And I'm just really struggling right now to, uh, you know, address all the issues and uh, keep focused and, and uh, uh, you know, making things happen so all right so let's move on to the next slide here all right what did i do you know and it just feels like nothing right it just feels like everything is not working as it should and it just seems like as we'll find out uh with the uh, friction points especially as one thing after another right now and you know, sort of the challenge right now is that i you know i don't want I'm not exactly going to be promoting this episode, right? That just not a lot of things get done. And it's not like I want to be like, you know, promoting it like, hey, see how much I didn't get done sort of thing. But that's sort of uh, the practice here is that, you know, I'm doing it for the, the sake of doing it and being able to say that I didn't get anything sort of done. But, you know, I did get some things done. I'm going to be demonstrating the front page. I got some product cards updated uh, and the, the front page looks a lot better. I'm really happy with it now. So there's one thing I can take away from all this. Uh, for the past couple of weeks here is that the, the front page is looking a lot better. And we'll, I'm going to be demonstrating that for the uh, shill segment here uh, for this episode. And then uh, I'm working on the video asset type. Uh, and that's actually done now. That is done. Yes. So um, and incorporating videos and it turns out I had that already in place, mostly in place, but there were a few things. But uh, now it's also uploading files and I'm actually going through that. I'm still working on that now. So I have I'm basically touching code I haven't touched since two years ago when I first started. And there's all sorts of things that it actually works. It's actually okay, but um, it's the controls that I'm using and it's really simple. So back then and up until uploading videos, it's been very simple files, you know, text files, very small, right? Not, not a lot of data and they just upload, right? But now we're getting into like, you know, incorporating videos and then also uh, songs as well, if you think about it too, is that, you know, uh, do WAV files. We also support WAV files now, which are more like um, production, you know, uh, higher quality. Those are gonna be larger files. And so, you know, with an upload tool, the one thing that I did not have, the one that I was using, it didn't have a cancel. And so what happens when uh, you hit refresh in the middle of an upload. Well, very bi bad things happen, it, it turns out. And the other thing that I was doing was a very bad practice with Blazor applications or just web development was that I was loading the entire file into memory and then taking that chunk of memory and then saving it into a stream. And that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to take the stream directly from the client and then move it and save it directly into your, uh, your destination. So it's stream to stream. It should never go into memory, uh, which was a stream, but uh, that's not how you're supposed to do it because if you think about it, if I have 100 people or 100 creators uh, uploading really large video files and it's all going into memory, even if it's temporary, you run the risk of memory, uh, out of memory exceptions, and that's not a good thing. So that's what I had to do, and that's what I'm doing now. And in order to do that, I had to 
uh, modify how I'm storing files in Azure because uh, the files that I'm uploading aren't actually saved yet. They're temporary files because that's why I was, so I was saving them in the memory as a temporary file. And now it's a temporary file and now I have to manage that on Azure side, right? So it's this whole like, you know, taking, it's very, you know, when you did it or when I did it two years ago, it's more of a, you know, very simple thing. But now it's like all these little complications are showing, but it's getting it done the right way. And that's kind of what I've been struggling with. And, you know, and it's just one thing after another keeps on popping up. Uh, and so that's kind of what I've been struggling with here. And uh, kind of the finally, um, the other thing too is um, we're running into uh, like a, another, uh, I'll get into that with a friction point with, with the database and uploading uh, or excuse me, ch uh, changing the schema for that. We'll get into that uh, with friction points. So let's move on to what I'm going to be doing here. Okay, so what am I going to be doing? I'm still working on file uploads and I've got, the, got that working. So now what happens is that it chunks and uh, does it divides the files up. So if you've got a 100 megabyte file, uh, it'll chunk it up into four megabyte chunks. And so that's what it uploads. And so now when you hit cancel in the middle of an upload, it's not as uh, disruptive. It's still disruptive, but it's not as disruptive. And so uh, it's, it's uploading these chunks and I actually haven't really gotten into testing it, so I can't really speak with authority on it. But uh, eventually what will happen is that if you hit escape in the middle of a download and it's, it's better now because it's chunking, uh, it's gonna delete that temporary file on Azure or it should. And then the other thing too about Azure is that you can set policies on particular um, directories. And so that's what I'm gonna be eventually be doing too. But I, I consider that a last uh, you know, last point of defense there. I want to be able to ensure that temporary files are handled in browser and state while we can get it. You know, I don't want to have it sitting out there while, you know, because it's still, it's waiting for a policy to collect it. And you can, you know, if you get enough of that, there's going to be memory issues there sort of thing, because that costs money, you know, eventually uh, or ultimately. And so, yeah, it's complicated, right? This is like, you thinking about it, you know, trying to finish that thought here is like two years ago and I made it, it was really simple. You just upload a file and uh, you really didn't think about it and it worked and it was really straightforward and it still is. It's just a few things now that we're adding videos, larger files, and we want to make sure that we design it in a way that a lot of people can be using it and we don't have to worry about that. And so, uh, or worry about as much as we should uh, sort of thing. And this is going to solve a lot of problems. So, uh, okay. So fr from there, uh, we're going to be moving on to preview fields, right? So one of the, you know, just kind of very limited feedback here, very limited following right now. And I'm actually okay with that based on how many problems I've had in the past month or so, uh, you know, but people have been kind of saying, well, how about having previews for, uh, you know, for our fields, for, you know, uh, products when we publish them, right? So we can't really see what we're buying, which is kind of a cool thing, right? It's a, it's a inverse of what the blockchain offers because at blockchain, everything's public, but here we're trying to do more traditional. You can't see what you're buying, but how about a little preview, right? So why don't we have a way of like, you know, um, sampling a, a track or seeing like a, a part of the screenshot or having a video during a marketing video like this, uh, where, you know, you record saying what you thought of it, kind of a cool thing, right? And uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to be implementing that. Hopefully that won't take too much time. Uh, and then finally, um, the creation process, right? Getting to the point of, you know, get, again, all this was written two years ago and it was just done just for the sake of getting it done, right? And uh, and it captures all of the business requirements, but it's really complicated. And there's a lot of steps that are involved and it's more like an advanced case right now. And so what I, um, you know, and feedback I've gotten so far is what's required is to make it simpler, right? And I, I know how to do it. I've got in my head how I want to, uh, design that. And so, uh, yeah, so getting around to doing that where it's just a real simple workflow, you upload of one file and then that's done. And then you type in a few characters and then boom, you've got yourself an issued product, right? It shouldn't be too many steps as it is now. So we will be working on that and hopefully in a month you'll be able to see that exactly. So I'm uh, getting uh, along that, along those lines, excuse me, is going, going through this list of, you know, uh, remaining tasks and, uh, you know, kind of getting to the alpha. I'm still circling June 7th. It's starting to encroach a little bit here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to, there are a few uh, tasks that I can work on to kind of uh, help out here and just kind of, you know, delay them, uh, move them until after. They're not exactly business critical. Uh, so I think it's about 10 more days I have to work with there. So we'll see. I'm, I'm just trying, man. Like, it's just one week. One week after another, one month after month, another, it's just like, how much worse can it get? You know? All right. So let's move on to the next slide here. Okay. Friction points. Hide the pain. Herald. Almost kind of like a mascot here. Uh, you know, uh, you notice that uh, JetBrains is no longer there, right? All, you know, JetBrains is very, they get just, they're really quick. They're really responsive. And a shout out again, a shout out again to uh, Sergey Kooks. Really just 
uh, you know, I actually spoke with them right before I started this recording, you know, and just like they're starting the blazer performance issues or, or the refactoring with that. So just really responsive and they're really engaging and just getting the warm and fuzzies there. So, uh, you know, JetBrains is no longer there, uh, but Microsoft, man, Microsoft this past week, especially, you know, and it's just like when it's raining, it's pouring sort of thing and raining fire, right? It's just, everything's on fire. And that's kind of the theme here right now. And Razor tooling, it's just, you fix one thing and then another thing is broken. I've got a link in the uh, description here in the YouTube video to kind of where the description or more context around a discussion that's going on around that. And the... You know, it's just so much, you know, again, it's just one fix one thing, break another. And that's been going on for like a year now, more than a year. And it feels like I've been reporting the same bug with a different face for longer than that. Right. And it just is not getting any better. And it's just sort of getting to the point where it's like my frustrations just run over. And as all these things, as you'll see, and it's a part of that's the kind of the common theme is just that uh, really... Uh, uh, really just got, got to a boiling point. And so, you know, props to N uh, Taylor there, uh, Mullen and Taylor Mullen. And uh, it just, there's a comment I'm going to be um, uh, linking specifically, just giving a pep talk, right? Like, it's really awesome. I just can't thank you enough for that, Taylor. It's just a, uh, I don't know if it's N Taylor or Taylor, but um, uh, that's a screen name or what, but I uh, just can't thank you enough for putting the effort into this post, which is going go line by line. This is like, we care, right? This is like, that's what I want to see, right? It's like, we care. We're, we're still working on this. And, you know, your screams are not going unheard. Uh, and I have a lot of screams lately. So, you know, this is one of those things where, uh, you know, just seeing that, it's like, okay, great. It's just, because it feels like that way, right? Like, I, I feel like I'm the only person that cares. I mean, I feel like I'm the only person that has really pushed the product this much and just gets to the point where it's just like, man, do I have to start looking at JavaScript? You know, sort of thing. It actually kind of got, got to the point but uh, I hate to admit that, but uh, and it's just kind of the facts. So you get to that point where it's just like, man, what are there any other options here to explore? Because it's just, this is all I do is just, I press a key and my, my CPU is going at 60 to 70% for seconds at a time, you know? And it's just like, I don't know how much more I can tolerate this sort of thing. And it's going on for years and, you know, over a year. And that's kind of like what it gets to. Okay. So I think I got that kind of, uh, um, consolidated, uh, kind of, uh, and ther uh, get the, the therapy out with that. And, but, um, you know, uh, debugger slowness actually, and in hindsight, is actually kind of not a problem. It's just the tooling right now. Uh, and good news now with the, the corrupt DMP files, we've got a, uh, a ping back on that thread. So I no longer have to, to a, uh, I no longer have to be a nag. I can put the nag cannon away and I th Nikolai, I think it is, uh, for, um, I hope that's the name uh, that uh, got uh, replied on the thread. And so now we, we are in, engaging and I, I got my nag kind of now. I hate it, right? I, I just don't want to be known for this. I, it's kind of a skill of mine, but I don't want to be known for it because I actually have a PC that's dedicated to nagging. I've got all my nags. Like I have all of my tasks on a particular uh, Hyper-V PC instance. And I have, <laughs> probably shouldn't admit this either, but I have different, I have six monitors and each monitor has a particular, I got this down to a science and it's, it's just, that's not what I want to be known as. But if I have to nag someone, I can get really good at it and uh, it's become a skill to be uh you know to temper that and to uh get better at not being such a nag but but again i don't want to do that right and it's one of those things where i don't want to do it but i have to do it because there's a pain point and there's a reason why i'm doing it sort of thing so okay finally here we got moved on to azure and azure i had this problem with uh deployments and it took two weeks it took two weeks to figure this out and it had to do because uh of a devops issue and it was just, you know, a really simple issue at the end of the day, but it took two weeks to figure this out. And now I am really scared. I have a lot of fear in me in case anything significant happens with Azure, right? Because it takes two weeks to find out something super simple. What happens when it's something more significant sort of thing? Uh, but it took two weeks to figure this out and we finally have, and it was actually hindering my deployments to both my testing and my staging environments. But now it's fixed. We figured out the problem, but it took two full weeks. And it's just like, Harold, how do you feel about that? Right? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of exactly, you know, Harold speaks succinctly towards the matter. It's exactly how we feel about it. And uh, it's just hide the pain, get good at that, right? Uh, okay, so the other issues, uh, ones that I've mentioned, but I will mention really quickly, SQL, oh, Seek. So Seek, uh, let's get to that one first, because Seek, um, got corrupted again. So this is the second time, and this actually looks like a major corruption. So first time it got corrupted and that was actually, it could be solved. But this time it looks like it got corrupted again. And this time it looks like it's not 
uh, solvable and I have to go back to backup. So it's just like, seek, I love you guys, but what is going on here? Got a new version and everything. I'm looking forward to trying it out, but I'm hoping that we can recover my environment again and get that working. So, okay, so finally here with the SQL Server Ledger, uh, one of the things that I encountered when I tried to de deploy, so we have a new schema and we try to deploy it. I've got the SQL Server Ledger, which is really cool. It's verifiable and it's, it's verifiable data, right? It's, it works just like a blockchain. But the little caveat is that it locks your schema. So if you have any sort of, you know, entity framework, you know, uh, migrations to change a schema, well, there's all sorts of restrictions around that. And now it's just sort of that, is it really worth it at that point, at this point right now, just to getting off the ground to have that sort of thing? Um, it probably isn't, you know, uh, to be honest, I'm probably going to roll that back and not have that for that, for this version, for the initial version, because no one's really talking about the blockchain. Everyone's talking about how cool this is, how cool of an idea this is, and how easy it would be to pay artists and how artists are interested in getting paid. But no one's talking about the blockchain, right? No one's saying, oh, I want to have the blockchain because this and that. No one's, all they care about is getting paid and they trust the service. This is kind of the thing about centralized services and decentralized crowd. I get it, you know, this, but that's when you get really, really big. That's, the, that's you know, these really big tech companies have problems like that. But when you're first starting out, people trust you, right? And that's what I'm hoping to show with these sorts of videos. You can see the kind of person I am and how I operate and whatnot, and you get a better sense of who I am. And there's just this implicit trust, especially when you're getting off the ground sort of thing. So I don't think that's much of a, a, an issue, but I definitely want, do want to get to the point to where it is verifiable with every transaction and whatnot. And so I think at a later point, we'll re-enable it. But for now, I'm, I'm going to have to flatten the database. Unfortunately, there really isn't a lot of data there, but uh, that's, you know, it's good that we, we found this out now rather than later sort of thing. All right, let's move on. Effective this level. Okay, look at this. Finally got that 0.5, right? It wasn't too difficult to add either. And uh, yeah, so I'm not exactly a one and I'm not exactly a two, but I am a 1.5. It's not very good, right? It's just, I sort of almost get the feeling that someone saw these videos, someone at Microsoft saw these videos and said, wow, he's got a happiness scale. Let's see if we can get that thing down to zero, right? And that's kind of how I feel. This is like, okay, is someone just playing a game on me because it's getting worse. <laughs> it's not getting better. And so, uh, yeah, so 1.5 is where I'm at. You know, it's just, I keep saying it's going to get better. And I'm just really, I'm, I'm hopeful, right? I'm, I, I haven't lost, I haven't, uh, I haven't lost any hope here and I, I'm, I'm not losing my morale, but it's just, yeah, it's just, we're, we're waiting for that point where it's going to be a little bit more than a, a three or a five sort of thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Time to chill. And I'm not sure how effective that's going to be this week because of, uh, uh, where things stand and I kind of to, to, to highlight the point here is that the dashboard uh, it's a good thing I didn't try to uh, to show this off because the dashboard is actually broken right now because the seek server is broken that was one of the things I did was I set up the dashboard to pull the uh, connections I got the connections working so you can see how many connections happened if it could connect to the seek server and you cannot connect to the seek server because it is corrupted right now and so I have to go figure that out. So that's kind of uh, the name of the game here. Uh, but we will go to the front page. I'm going to click on that side, on that top link there. And here you are. So uh, one thing you'll notice is that we've got uh, a few styling issues here, uh, uh, styling issues fixed. And uh, in a desktop, there was a lot of space that was shown here. So that, that's no longer there. And it's kind of more like a traditional web page now where, excuse the... Oh, is that, okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there's Ed saying hi. Hi, Edge. Uh, and so, uh, right, so now it's more of a traditional web page, and, uh, you know, it saves a little bit more space, so it's not so spacey, even though it is kind of a Starship thing. I guess that was kind of going with the theme. But here we have the front page, right? We've got a, f a few more additions, and each, you know, there's more clarity now on what you are buying. And so you can see that uh, with the different types. And so you've, you can also filter by the different types. So now you can see, you know, when a, a creator or a producer uh, publishes their, their products, you can see the type of product that they are and uh, producing and if it's available or not. And you can see we already have one that has sailed, uh, sold out here, excuse me. And we've got, uh, we have another one here that's, that's uh, sold out here. So anytime a product is sold out now, you can see that, but it's still there. And you can, go, you can still visit it for more information if you'd like. And so kind of a cool addition and it's just, it's better, right? So getting back to like, you know, working on this two years ago, I just had the front page just use whatever there was, whatever was there in the template. And so I just took the template, uh, which is, you can find the template that I used at the bottom of every page. And uh, it's Phantom from uh, HTML5 up, I believe it is. And uh, I, I, I 
can't remember if it's uh, yeah, HTML5 up. So just scroll the page, the bottom page, and it's, and it's right there for your review. Uh, and so I didn't put a, a lot of effort into it. I just kind of used the uh, template as is. And so they're using like pastels and like mouse over effects. It's kind of cool, right? Because back two years ago, getting things to work was like it, right? Getting things to work was like amazing, right? It's Blazor, brand new technology. And uh, it was just so awesome to get it work. And for me back then, that was awesome. But now it's like, People are wanting to use this now, and they want to kind of want have something that works a little bit more than just loading. The expectation and the bar is a little higher now. So, yeah, okay, or good, good point. Yeah, so I, I made it so that there's a little bit more uh, information and got rid of the uh, uh, got rid of the template. So, kind of just uh, clicking through here real quick, um, you can filter, and it just filters through uh, to the different uh, types that you want. If you just want to. Uh, you know, illustrated text and it's an additive. So now it's just showing both the images and uh, illustrated texts and uh, we can uncheck them and uh, it will just filter accordingly. So pretty happy with that. And then the other thing that's happened here is if we go here and it shows the price very clear uh, is that it'll show you the, the types here in the covers and then it allows you to go back to that type if you'd like. So you can go here and it will take you to a dedicated uh, page for those types. And so if you want to get to the uh, front page, of course, you just click on the link at the top and that'll take you to that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an explanation here and a little bit more uh, clarity of what's happening on the front page. And that is the shill for this week. Wow. Okay. I, you know, I felt like I was going to go 30 minutes easily uh, with how much I was talking back there. And uh, here we are. We're going to uh, be a little bit less than that by uh, far. So uh, depending on how much I talk here, but uh, you know, really quick, a uh, correction here is that uh, the uh, person who chimed in on that DMP file thread is Nicola. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Uh, not Nic uh, Nikolai, it's uh, Nicola. So thank you, Nicola, for helping out and uh, for chiming in, you know, and I just, I, I do again, I just, I it's like, uh, it's just such an important thing, right? I, I feel like I'm really the only person that is testing Visual Studio to this extent, right? 150 projects and uh, these DMP files, anywhere between eight to 12 gigabytes. And, uh, you know, it's just, again, it's, but the other thing too is that the more important is that it's it's hindering reporting of other issues, right? Because of that, of the, the scope that I'm pushing it. So anyways, thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, chiming in, helping out with testing to figure that out. And then thank you to everyone else out there who is uh, likes and subscribes and you support uh, appreciate it all. And, uh, it's, it's really not a lot right now and it's all just me, but just anything that occurs, uh, it, all of it's monumental at this point and I'm very appreciative of it. Okay. So feedback, uh, this is actually a QR code that goes to my Twitter profile and I've got one for an email address and the actual product right now, if you want to check it out online and, uh, check it out and provide any feedback, definitely open to it, uh, constructive or otherwise. And I will uh, meet you there and we can, we can discuss it. So, all right, that's, does it for this month. Uh, see you next month. Month. Until then, stay bright.